The Tech Scout was the first time I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I, got, I got the entire crew in I here know. and Look everybody has head. questions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Where we, we shooting over here? The lights <laughs> over that way. Okay, got electric over this way. And I'm like, oh man. <laughs> When did we when, first meet each other? It's like when, when people ask me, like when I when I met like you know one of my best friends, like you try to think back and you can never think of that. Like, what was moment. that moment? I don't really know. Yeah. And, and so I was, did you remember what the? Yeah, I, it was right around Fruitvale Station. Yeah, Fruitvale Station had premiered at Sundance, and I remember you and Matt had hit me, and was basically like, Mike, your life is getting ready to change. You know, like you know, you kind of told me about the movie, told me about Ryan, you know what I'm saying? You just kind of just, just talking me through the movie. And I was I like, wow, know. like this guy actually watched the film and he's <laughs> actually like, he, he, he likes my work. And then from there, it, it was just like a big brother, little brother kind of like, you know, relationship, man. I, yeah, it's, it's funny because to me, so it happens you get older, like I saw the movie, I was like, you know, I'm like, this guy's just like me. You know what I mean? I, I like, and I'm, you know, you're like, well, yeah, I'm a little older. Like it's a big brother, kind of close brother. But <laughs> you know, to me, I saw, I just remember so clearly, I saw that movie and it was like this guy, is a star. Not only is he a fabulous actor, but he's just a magnetic kind of center of that movie that was so raw in mm. the way it was to feel real. And in the middle of that, to have, so it was like really self-evident to me. I was like, I'm not sure I'm gonna call him, but like a fan. I was like, I'm gonna call him tell him I love this movie. And, and that meant a lot, man, because I think for me, I was still really insecure, you know, <laughs> around opening up a film. I think for that movie, for me, was the first time I was the lead of a movie and carrying a film was a big, you know, it's a question, it's a lot of inner doubt, you know, yeah. as an actor, as you're coming up, trying to see yeah. if you could, you could actually like, you know, um, you know, open a film. And when you kind of just, you know, gave me all the things that you loved about the movie and, and, and the performance, I was like, wow, okay, this is like the first industry, you know, a peer, a colleague, somebody that I look up to actually telling me that they like my work. And, uh, it, and, it, and it, meant, it meant the big deal to me uh, that time, That's man. sweet because yeah. I really was, I, I just saw it as like, it's so clear to me, like, honestly, like I could have foreseen right all the way up to here. Like this guy's just gonna bup, 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 and, and that's what you be said. ready because I I know that there's a lot of things that come along that are difficult that exactly. nobody tells you. And I had a friend doing it with me yep. that I could sort of bounce things like, isn't this fucking crazy? Yep. You know? Yep. And I feel like it's a very lonely experience sometimes because yep. you don't really know. And I was like, hey man, if I can help you at all, or you want to say talk to somebody who's never gonna tell anybody, mm -hmm. just say it would give you honest feedback. I may not be right. I always tell you the truth. I do what I can, and and I love the the relationship we have. It's really like, and now I just brag about it. I'm like, oh, Michael Jordan. I know him. My kids are like, shut up. Hey, you know. <laughs> no, man, it's 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 a it, 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 people don't really realize like how how big of an impact that can you know that that can make on somebody, especially when uh, you don't know what's coming next. Yeah. You know, and you know in this industry, so many things. You know, you know, uh, you could be one way one day and and, and something totally different the next. And uh, you know, you, you ride this this wave and these in these windows of opportunity. So for you to kind of call out the pitfalls or you know the dry spells or those moments that you might have when you're you know you're doubting yourself or doubting the choices and decisions that you're making, you know, you really kind of like laid that out in a really way and you made yourself accessible. It's a very big deal. People don't realize to to go from a life where you feel like you're just part of the crowd to being kind of in front of the crowd. It's a transition, bro. And it's it, it, it's a big adjustment to make and, and you did it really well. And what you really did that I admire is like you, this same thing with directing, was that confidence like, I wanna do this, I know how to do it, I believe in this. And as soon as I talked to you about it, I was like, you should, this, this is a guy <laughs> who's gonna be great. And you were, you did a spectacular job. Thank you, and man. You, you really, uh, it's just always so impressive. What made you go, okay, I, I wanna do this? Because a lot of great actors, they're happy. Yeah. They're good. They're like, I like acting. I'm comfortable. I got a good life. I don't, you're not getting a pay raise. Yeah. You're, a director. you're not like, you're not working less. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> so you have to have that something inside you say, I want to tell the story. I want to be the author. What, what was that like I, for you? I, I think it was a, a mixture of a few different things. Um, you know, being on set with Ryan so much, you know, somebody that looked like me, somebody around the same age as me. And he directed, you know, Fruitvale, you know, went on to do Creed, Black Panther. Seeing him handle a set, just the confidence that he had. And I remember one day he was like, Mike, you should start directing. Don't wait for the right time. Just, you, you got it. You've been on set your entire life. Just just kind of go for it. Just 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 jump into the deep end. Like, trust me, you got mm -hmm. it. And I was like, okay, you know what I'm saying? So that kind of planted the seed a little mm -hmm. bit earlier on. And then over time, I think 
Another element that kind of played into the mix was just the circumstances. You know, after, you know, Creed 2, um, I knew Ryan wasn't coming back and doing Creed 3. You know, I was looking, trying to figure out who was going to direct me in this movie. At this point, I know the character better than most. I know the franchise, like, who who's going to be that person? And then, you know, I just kind of looked around and I was like, oh, shit, I guess it's me. You know, and, 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 and I, I felt like that was the perfect opportunity for me to play a character that I played two other times before, the most I've ever played at that, at mm -hmm. that point. And I had a clear vision of kind of what I wanted to do. I kind of, you know, saw where I wanted Adonis Creed and, and the Creed family to kind of go in, the, in this movie. But then also I had some creative swings that I wanted to, I wanted to take. I, I really wanted to push the envelope in the genre. Mm -hmm. I wanted to shift the tone a little bit more, use my, my love of, uh, you know, animation mm -hmm. and things that I love and care about and kind of infuse that into the movie. So that, all those things kind of made this perfect storm for me to kind of, you know, walk into it and, and, and do, that, do that project. When you started doing it, what part about it did you feel most comfortable with and where were you, what did you kind of discover like, hey, I'm actually all right at this. The best part about directing is kind of mm. having this idea, you're not sure if it's gonna work and then feeling like it does. Okay. That's a really, I find that very rewarding. Sometimes it doesn't, but, it, but what was that, like where were you at with that? Where were you confident about and what were you kind of like, I'm gonna take a shot with this, but I'm not sure. I think I was very confident with the fights mm -hmm. because that part of the process I, I daydreamed about the most mm -hmm. i think as i was going through mm -hmm. creed one creed two you know up into creed three so the fights i had a, i had a handle on i knew how i wanted to really use anime you know what i'm saying and 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 push the action you know i mean look there's but so many jabs you can shoot you but so many <laughs> hooks you've seen you know throughout the rocky franchise mm -hmm. and the creed franchise like we've seen so many fights done so many different ways mm -hmm. what was going to make mine different you know mm -hmm. how are we going to like evolve it to the next level so that was something i was i was more confident about i was a little more hesitant around the intimate scenes hmm. You know, I think one-on-one -on -one scenes, you know, mm -hmm. all right, where am I going to put the camera? Where is mm -hmm. this going to be? And, and also my performance. I think directing myself was something that, you know, I, I called you about mm -hmm. and, 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 I, um, and I asked you, like, what was that like? You know, like, you know, who do I lean on mm -hmm. uh, to give me honest feedback? Mm -hmm. You know, who's going to, like, make sure, okay, we got it. We need to go ahead and get this right. coverage or we need to move on because, you know, Time on set is something that's always in the back of your head. You got to move on to the next shot, move on to the next shot. So I think one of the things that I was a little hesitant about was definitely the, the more intimate one on one scene. What did you, how, where'd you end up coming down on? Because I hear different things like mm -hmm. in terms of, hey, you actually directing yourself turned out to be either easier or more difficult mm -hmm. or, you know, like, it, and I do think that's an interesting thing because it's not really about directing, it's more about your acting, like whether or not you're the type of actor who sort of wants to go to the monitor and check your stuff. Yeah, or they, yeah, yeah. You know, oh, I'm, I learned like one thing or another about, about acting from it. I, I think I became a better actor from directing, sort of them seeing that point of view. Okay. Like the thing people told me, I asked a bunch of actors who, mm. did the same thing, like who were directors, what's, what's your advice? And, the thing they all said in common was don't shortchange your own coverage. I was just curious. So I was like, you're gonna wanna be out there and be a hero and shoot everybody's takes and then get one take yourself. Okay, but let's say line and move on, mm -hmm. you're gonna regret it yep. because you're shortchanging like, you know, your, this character for the movie. What, what did you find with that? I think that was one of the things I, I went into it you know, it's always, the, I always give my actors the option. You know, you want to go first, you want to go, you know, you're last, like whatever makes you feel comfortable. And I took that approach the first few days. Uh, and then when I'm looking at dailies, I'm like, man, I wish I would have had spent a little bit more time on myself. You know what I mean? And then like, it's like, it's like oh, I wish I would have had a little bit more time just to get a couple more variations, a couple more options. Uh, but I did enjoy taking time and shooting the scenes that I wasn't in. I know. Oh my God! It was such it was it was, it was such a it was such a break from like just the the tornado. You get to watch it and do it. I, I know. Isn't it? I, and, I have the same way. And sit behind the monitor. But one one thing that you told me that I did I did really take the heart was um I did the first two or three takes without ever going back to the monitor. Mm -hmm. You know I didn't I didn't want to look at it. I wouldn't do anything. I just wanted to get three out the way, and then I went back and just check. Then I checked the monitor, checked those takes or whatever, and made my adjustments from there. I didn't want any notes from anybody. I just really wanted to just just get it up on its feet and take those first three takes to myself. I think, and I think it's interesting because what I learned was like, well, you know, you actually. I, that's why I think actors tend to, uh, when they have the ambition to, it, you know make good directors, particularly like you look mm. at, well, people coming out of various different other parts of the business and becoming directors, mm. actors have been pretty successful. Warren Beatty, when I said like, you know, we was talking about your own coverage, he's like, I mean, you didn't start directing to fuck up your own performance, <laughs> right? I was like, no, <laughs> no, actually, now that you point, point it out. You know? <laughs> and it's, it's, uh, it's like, you have a sense of what you want to do yeah. and you end up in the editing room 
it's just you anyway. Like there's nobody else going, but like to me what I found was, it's not about like, who do you lean on tell you we got it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's about taking that responsibility yourself. That's true. And realizing this is gonna come down to me. I'm gonna make those decisions about all these performances, mm -hmm. including mine. Yep. And so, you know, it, cause you get in the editing room and go, okay, all right, well now I get to choose and I get to do it myself. And, and so I think that that was where I, I came out. I, and I hear you saying like, you give your actors the, like how did you approach working with other actors? Like when you go, okay, now it's my chance to, to give this person to create the environment for them to succeed in. What mm -hmm. was your, what did you, what do you think worked the best? What was your instinct on that? I think prep was the biggest thing for me. Like really spending as much time as I could in rehearsal mm -hmm. and working out those kinks, finding, you know, I had a really strong relationship with everybody in the cast. Mm -hmm. So Felicia, Tessa, you know, I had a couple new characters, Wood, Wood mm -hmm. Harris, like, like I've known for since I was a kid as well. So I, I had a, a, a sense of comfortability with, yeah. with, with those guys. I think with uh, with Jonathan, with Mila, you know, my daughter, um, um, who who is deaf, and 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 that you know language barrier, and have to learn 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 ASL to to, to kind of communicate with job. her. Appreciate it was that. so good. The performance was so good. I remember being like, okay, I'm gonna watch the movie now, and I was like, I was nervous. Like it was my, you know, I was like, here we go, and and I got about halfway through, and I was I was watching my wife, and I was, oh man, it's so good. <laughs> I felt so happy, you know what I mean? That makes like, me feel good, So man. joyful, and I was like, this is gonna this be beautiful. It's like your heart was in it, and it was so skillfully done, and the performance was, like even, like that thing was more of all, because I felt like you really got to kind of follow your own instincts man. as a performer, and they were good. And Thanks, then man. you had this whole fucking visual palette. And like when I had my first movie, I was like, we're gonna sit the camera here, we're just gonna look at the actors. That's what we're gonna do. I'm not, I, you know, that's what I'm confident about. And you seem to have a lot more confidence and, and boldness for the visual palette, for the way it was cut, the way, the whole thing. Like, uh, what do you attribute that level of, of, of confidence and at least it looked like to me sophistication? I think, the, I think the team around me, I think my DP Kramer, my, my, my camera operator, Michael Heathcote, you know, I, like this is like my third or fourth film that I've done with them. I think they really wanted to see me succeed as well. I think their heart was in it. They were there for the right, re, right reasons. Um, and everybody was bought in. You know, mm -hmm. I think everybody was bought into the story. They, they were bought into the vision. So, um, you know, my costume designer, uh, Liz Wolf, this is our second time working with her as well, her second Creed. And everybody felt a piece of ownership of it a little bit. And, and, and I think that went a long way, you know, when, when they were going the extra mile, you know, and, you know, shooting, you know, you're going late, you know, showing up early, you know, just all the, the little in-between time that, that, that everybody has to really contribute to make a big difference yeah. in, in the movie success. Uh, I think I had that around me. I think the tech scout was the first time I was like, oh shit. <laughs> It's like, I got a whole, I got, I got the entire crew in here and Look everybody has head. questions. Oh uh, yeah, where, where, the we lights, <laughs> where we shooting over here, the lights over that way, okay, got electric over this way. And I'm like, oh man, I'm just trying to like, I'm trying to see it, I'm trying to find it. So I think building that confidence, you know, each day, each location that we went to, um, I, I gained the momentum of like, okay, cool. Just let's, let's clear the room for a second. Let me just, I, I think being okay with saying, I need some time. Yeah. G give, give me some space real quick and let me let me see it. Let me let me find it was uh, a learned uh, thing over 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 time. See, and I think that is actually what you need to be a, a good director mm -hmm. is that exact combination. You have to have talent. You have to have drive. You have to have a vision. Yes. Mm -hmm. You also have to be able to go. Like, I understand that, like, people talk about camera opera, like your camera opera is a valuable person. Like, mm -hmm. Connie herself worked for it was so good. And yep. you have these relationships, and you, you have to be able to be, to know, like, this is, if it's just my movie, it's gonna be an underachievement. I want you to make it better, you exactly. to make it better, you to make it better. And so that's what actors know, is like, you wanna work with a great actor. You wanna be in a scene with Denzel. Correct. So that makes the movie better. Correct. You know what I mean? You're not trying to be like, I gotta be the best one. I'm thrilled to have all those people do that. And then, you do have to have the confidence to go, Okay, yep. I hear you. You know, let me figure it out. Yep. I'm not sure. Yep. And by the way, I like your idea. I hear you. This is what I want to do, and go like, no. There's a time where I can't just be subject to what everyone else wants. Exactly. I gotta drive it. Yep. You know? and, and and learning everybody's love language, and because everybody, <laughs> you know, you have to talk to everybody different. Yeah. And, and it's different personalities. You can't. You. I. I found for me, you know, 
I, you know, okay, Kramer, I'm gonna talk to you like, like this. You know, I know how to get the best out of you. We vibe and connect on a certain level. Okay, if I'm talking to my camera operator, oh, very shorthand, actually less words. Right. We actually don't have to talk a lot right. because it's like that ballet. You know what I'm saying? We're finding that that, that choreography is, yeah, and is they're there. Good. I find these people are like, if I'm not talking to them, it means you're doing a great job. Yeah, it's good. amazing. Love you know that. what I mean? They always know like, if I say something, like something's wrong. Mm-hmm. There's those people, and there's actors are like that too. Exactly. You know, where some actors want to, Go through it and through it and through it and through it. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, where are we going with this? And now oh, I see you just want to, mm-hmm. you just want to kind of get it out for a while. All Correct. Right, right. And some people, you know, you said, I thought the interesting thing you said was like, mm-hmm. I, about how uh, really a director's like you alluded to, like they, you, you kind of, I always assumed I show up and the director's going to tell me what to do. Mm-hmm. So I'm here and I'm ready now. Tell me. And that really, as I discovered, is not the job. You're there directing. You go, okay, bring what you have Correct. to it. Correct. And to have that instinct and know that ahead of time. So that's what I mean about being a better actor. I was like, oh no, I'm gonna show up at this movie with some choices, with a thing. One thousand percent. Yeah. And then and then nudge me back into the right yes. direction, and then and and align it with your vision and what you see for the overall thing. And of course, there's gonna be takes for me, and takes that you need things very specific because you have a certain cut and a version of this performance mm-hmm. and this scene that you want to see together in the edit. So I got you. So I think after directing, I think looking at set and the process totally different. It's like, you know, Wizard of Oz, like seeing behind. I was know? just gonna say that you really see, uh-huh. oh, you're like, oh, this is the whole thing. Uh-huh. I see. Because you know, after you come out and you have this point of view. Yep. You know what I mean? And when you're kind of back there, mm-hmm. you know, like, well, that's important. This is, we're okay. You know, it, it does allow you that thing, the confidence, in the, because it's, to me, it's about relaxation. Everybody, but with actors, everybody's doing their job, like have the sense mm-hmm. that you're believed in, you're relaxed. You can do whatever you want. We're, not, we, we're all going to fuck up and make mistakes. Correct. We're every t- it's not going to be good. It's not about that. We're just trying to find the one good moment. Exactly. You know what I mean? That's what we're going for. Because that thing of feeling like I got to be great all the time doesn't let you experiment. And it doesn't make people feel, feel believed in, in that way. And mm-hmm. it sounds like you just showed up understanding all of that, which is I, good. No, because I think <laughs> it, it, was, it was the prep, man. I think, yeah. I think to your point of shot listing, you know, to, uh, to uh, you know, um, storyboarding things that make the most sense, you know, mm-hmm. things that you need the entire company to be able to really get a good visual on so they have a more of an idea. Yep. They can do their homework a bit more as we're walking into these production meetings. But, but you know, for, for, for me as an actor making that transition to, to directing, like what, what made you want to make that transition at first? Like for was, me, yeah. it came out of a different, it didn't come out of success the way mm. it did for you. It came out of, Failure, really. Came out of feeling like, I'm not happy with this. Things weren't working. I come out, I'm an actor, I'd done stuff I liked. And then I had been in situations where Mm -hmm. I felt like people going, this is the way we should do it, that's what we should do, and and kind of following that along. And then when it doesn't work, Mm -hmm. it's like, well, if I'm gonna fail, I wanna fail on my own merits, my own idea, not on what somebody else, because that that doesn't give me any comfort. It's like, I listened to you, you totally go down this road, and we hit a landmine. Well, that's not, and so, I felt like, okay, for me, I need to mm-hmm. take an, a, authority over this. And I, I really had like something, I think something to prove the more I look back, because I met, just drove me and drove me and drove me. And I was like, well, I, I was at a point where I was like, I don't know if I'm better than anybody. Mm. I know I can work harder than anybody. I'll Love just that. be here all day. I'll just keep on going. And I had that, and some of that I had to let go of, because I'm like, this is not healthy to just be so <laughs> to grind like it this, out all you know the, yeah yeah, yeah. i remember the first time i was in a movie i wouldn't i wasn't even ready to be in a movie okay. my first movie i was like i can't be in it second movie i did it I, and it was it was like you say it was both kind of freeing and interesting mm-hmm. but honest to god i remember because i was like okay i'm gonna have the scene where i'm supposed to be this ex pro athlete he's got to be tough and all this so we got to see how he's got to look great and i was watching you and i was thinking People don't understand the level of difficulty mm-hmm. that you add to a job. If you have, because people don't look like that walking around. Oh no. You can't look like that physique. Uh-uh. That's a built up thing that you train to and you take your sugar and carbs down and you, you get to this moment and to sustain that, it, it's so <laughs> draining. You're, it's, it, you're cranky, you're depressed, you're, with, you're, you're deprived, yep. you know? And I was, you held on to that through that movie. It must have made it twice as hard when you're like, God damn, I just want a fucking burger. I want donuts and burger. Yeah. And any people that know me, they know I love food. So, so I think that was one of the benefits that, and this is the great thing with Sylvester Stallone and Erwin Winkler and what they kind of created with the Rocky franchise was the fight system and how you shoot the fights. Hmm. We, we front loaded. 
You know, really? first, oh, so you could get in shape and work up. Ah, that is so. Yeah. When you're going through pre-production, that's really hell week because you're doing yeah. all the meetings, but you're at, you're working out twice a day. Mm. You're on the diet. It is mm-hmm. a little, you know, you're moody, you're cranky. Yeah. You know what I'm saying you're, you're you're burning your way through, but you have to show up the first two three weeks is all the fights. And, so you get uh, that out the way. Then okay, cool. So you're not holding it through shooting, mm-hmm. holding on mm-hmm. to yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And it actually works out better because you end up doing the montage last. So you've already kind of gained because you started to eat a little more regularly. Right. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Right, you started right, right, to be right. a little bit more fuller. Yeah. So by the time you're going through the montage, you haven't lost your complete physique. Yeah. But you look like you're actually starting to get in shape for what you shot right, in right. the beginning. Now, of people the don't film. realize that like more uh, like ripped is actually smaller. What it looks bigger. I can't. It looks uh-huh. tougher on uh-huh. camera because it's defined. I'm ex. Well, you see guys <laughs> in the in movies like, damn, this dude's really. And you see him in real life, you're like, look at a little. Spo- yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that was interesting. Thing I learned that you can put on size doesn't necessarily look at the same because the camera can't tell the difference. Exactly. Like, you don't know if those guys 250 or 175 if it's in proportion. And that, that's why that leanness, it's, which just sucks because it's the hardest thing to do. Cardio, and because it's all food, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the diet and what you're eating and that directly affects your mood most of the time. And you know, everybody knows that knows, but the crew and everybody, they get to know along, they the, along, out, along, along, know. along the process. People start being like, damn, you, they, see how, like, <laughs> they see you at lunch and they're like, okay, I see. Yeah. And the, the crew goes over and eats lunch, you know, and they're like, ooh, the orange roughy, whatever, like the little the chicken thing and <laughs> yeah, some broccoli. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, ooh, he's also torturing himself that's like, it. in the movie. And always eating on set you know i think eating whenever you can get a meal you know yeah. i think even as directing you don't really have a lot you don't have a fucking set lunch yeah you're not sitting down taking lunch your 30 is, yes, exactly. so everything's a real so, oh, okay, well, that's one thousand okay yeah eating as you go what what um the relationship that you that you have with, with, with matt you know how was that like you know directing him you know we were so comfortable you know somebody for so long mm-hmm. it's like but the one thing that we hadn't done, and I had like, you know, during the course of our friendship, we had written together, we had acted together. That's very, very comfortable and easy. Mm-hmm. What I realized is that like, oh, he's, he, he hasn't even really been on, in the movies I directed. So here I've made mm-hmm. these five movies and he hasn't uh, seen that kind of part of me exactly okay. or been on the set like that. So when, I never thought about it until we started shooting. And I actually could see he was kind of like, all right, what's it going to be? I believe in you. You know, I was actually expecting you to try to talk me out of it. You weren't gonna listen anyway. Matt has worked with like Spielberg, Scorsese, Oof. the Coen brothers, Oof. you know, like, I mean, you go back to every direct, I can't mm. even, Alexander Payne. I mean, you just, every single person who's like a significant, there are fewer directors who I consider great directors that Matt hasn't worked with, right? Okay. If he was gonna put something up there, I would say the roster of directors, is the most impressive thing about his resume. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, okay, so now in his mind, he's gonna kind of be holding me up against these other experiences. And that there was the same dynamic okay. that happens in other movies where, and you can't really get around it, which is like, yeah, I'm your friend, I love you. If you're gonna direct this movie, I have to trust you. Mm-hmm. And you, know, he, you go into all those experiences, theoretically, seeing the other movies and trusting them in that sense. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, how are we gonna do this scene? How's this gonna work? And you can't expect somebody, even if they're your friend, if they yeah. love you, to, it, as an actor, this is a very sacred thing. I'm gonna put my heart into this thing and my mm-hmm. performance. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna be on the poster. Episodes, and you're really holding, I put that in your hands. That's a lot of trust. And you have to honor that and go like, okay, then let's do it and you, as we go through. And, he, as, and then it was a really beautiful, rewarding thing. I remember the cinematographer, Bob Richardson, who's just a brilliant, brilliant cinematographer, he came over to me after like mm-hmm. third or fourth date and he was like, I think Matt trusts you now. And I was like, I think so too. <laughs> and I, but I felt such a satisfaction <laughs> yeah. from that because you're not gonna get that free. No. You're not gonna get that from your, somebody yeah, your yeah, friend yeah. or your fan, like, I love you, you you're my boy. Though. You're not gonna direct the movie though yeah. that I'm in. You know, that's a different standard. And I felt a professional kind of like, uh, respect there that, that actually meant a lot to me. I believe in your son. I believe he's different. And I believe you might be the only person on earth who knows it. When we were gonna do it, I went and met the, the other Michael Jordan. And <laughs> the other uh, guy. That's kind of dope. That yeah, 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 yeah. Two Michael Jordans. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. I'm on, the, I'm on the, the Michael Mount Rushmore a little now, bit. Yes, I'm that's a pretty big deal, <laughs> dude. You like. <laughs> Oh, I'm a, my name is Marlon Brando. I want to be an actor. It's like, okay, well, good luck. Um, <laughs> there was one before. It's, and, and here, you know, when I talked to him, because it was like, listen, why don't I fucking do anything mm. that you don't like? Here's the deal. This movie, 
you're not him. He's not in it. I couldn't tell the Michael Jordan story from inside. I tell it from outside. What does this look like from the outside point of view? Mm -hmm. But I was very respectful, and I was like, let me just start with like, if you're not down with it, this happening to fuck it. Yeah. I don't need to do the movie. Yeah. You know what I mean? This is your legacy, which you've established, who your whole life. Yeah. And, you know, had that conversation with him, and, and he's a very, uh, uh, you know, impressive, powerful guy. And what struck me about that, and what that meeting and, and, and making this movie, what I realized, and of my friends, like uh, many of whom are black, African-American people who are like, you know, kind of let me know like, hey, this is not just a basketball player. Mm -hmm. This guy's a very, very meaningful, important cultural symbol of greatness and excellence Correct. that is past. You're not just making a movie about an athlete. Mm -hmm. You're making a movie about a, an icon, a, a somebody who means something. And so I, I took that responsibility, you know, very seriously. Yep, yep. And in, in particular, I was like, my hope, that was like an audience of one. I was like, if Mrs. Jordan likes the movie, I'll be happy. You know what I mean? That was, and and uh, cause I knew if she didn't, I was, I was fucked. <laughs> you <just> told <laughs> but, but, uh, <laughs> but I think, you know, that's an extra weight to carry, which is what you talked about. Like I saw Ryan do it, somebody who looks like me, cause there are not a lot, not nearly enough black directors. Mm -hmm. And so that puts on you, I, I would assume, and, and what I saw from like, not only I'd be a great basketball player, but mm. I'm gonna mean something else to people mm. because I have mm. to like, and for you, you're gonna do something very few people have done and, and become that symbol for someone else. It's a, it's a reality, you know? I, th I think for me, you know, watching Spike Lee, you know, uh, Harry Belafonte, you know, um, Denzel, Forrest Whitaker, um, Sidney Poitier, you know, you, you, you got these greats, you know, who've done multiple things, you know, not just in front of the camera, not just, you know, they, they don't just have one uh, career path, you know, they're very multi hyphenate. And for me, being able to, you know, see, you know, my generation, Ryan Coogler, directing an independent film that opened up and premiered at Cannes, you know, and Sundance and Cannes, and then move on to an original spin off of a Rocky franchise in the Creed, but then go do a hundred million dollar plus film for Marvel with Black Panther. And I was like, man, okay. Like he was my, you know, um, idea of, you know, I can do it too, you know, and he always reinforced that, you know, to me. So that was really important to kind of give me that internal confidence because, you know, I think representation is extremely important, you know what I'm saying? And, and not having that in certain areas, you know, and my, my team and people that are close to me, you know, we, you know, we, we kind of speak about that because I take what I do very seriously, you know, and I'm, and I'm a student, I want to learn. I always want to uh, push my limits. I want to see what's next and what else can I do? What, what can't I achieve? Let's, let's, let's push it, let's do it. Knowing, getting the feedback, I think, from, you know, the audience, the fans, uh, people that you meet, uh, you know, on the street or in crossing and people aren't really approaching me like, oh, you're famous. It's like, oh, this role meant something to me. This project meant something to me. Like, oh, I'm really affecting people, like not just on a surface level, but maybe how they think or how they feel or how they look at other people or how they look at other subjects. And that once you know that that's a responsibility you have, a power that you have, an influence, you know, you do approach your work with a, a, a higher standard, you know? Not that I wasn't, I didn't have a high standard already, but that added weight, that extra added layer to it is, all right, how can I, you know, help influence the next generation? How can I make them better? How can I feed them? How can I be an example for them? How can I not just talk about it? How can I walk in and live it every day? So that pressure I do put on myself and it's, it's, it's heavy, but it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm put in this position for, for a reason. You know, I, I believe, you know, we're all exactly where we're supposed to be. So for me, it's like moving forward, I, I, I take everything that I do uh, very seriously and, and, I, and I try to, A, do it for myself. And I think that's something I'm trying to, you know, teach myself and learn and remind myself throughout the process. It's like, Mike, you gotta live for you too. You mm -hmm. know, but at the same time, I do have the responsibility of the community at large. And I, I wear that like, like a badge of honor. Like I see it with my wife where, Obviously, she's a big, you know, music star, and that's that's mm. a different thing too. But also that exactly what you described, like people who approach her, they see me, they go, "I like that movie." You're an actor, mm. all right? Like, forgetting about relative degrees of more fame. But when they approach her, it's like, you mean something. I haven't seen somebody like me or from where I'm from doing what you do. Forget about this. It's like who you are and how you live. Correct. In front of the world. Correct. Means something mm -hmm. to me. I'm following in some, you know, following very big footsteps, you know what I'm saying? And I'm just trying to do my part. This is my part of the race that I got to run. You know, I think my ancestors and, you know, the mentors and, and people that have, that have done this before me, it's just, this is my part to do, to do, to do the work. And 
and the art and the love and the humanity of it and, 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 and putting people together and understanding different perspectives. And that's what cinema's about. That's why I love movies so much. That's why I love storytelling because you get a chance to, uh, you know, see, you see life through somebody else's eyes, you know, for, for, for once and really empathize, you know what I mean? And tell somebody else's story. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of layers to it and, and, and politics and what movies you, you can make and do make and what should, what, what makes money and what doesn't make money and what, what's, what's for the art, what's for the commercial success and that balance between what movies you do when. And, and, and it's a, you know, I think, you know, some black directors don't get the opportunity to take as many swings and, and, and chances and creative chances because they are stuck in a formula that they're trying to just get something made or do the I right thing. I mean, some black don't get as well, many opportunities and not considered in the same way. You it, do one movie, then they go, oh, that's yeah. the only kind of movie you can do. And all those things that you just articulated, and it looks like juggling chainsaws. Like, mm. before you even get to work, you're navigating all of these different ideas about and questions about what's the right way to pursue it. How, and forget about how do I live my life. It's like, how do I pursue this career in an intelligent, strategic way that's mm. also congruent with my values and also in keeping with what I want to project. It's a, but, the, but now it's like, I want to have some fun too. You know, <laughs> but, but all that is fun, you know, but I, th I think you have, to, you, have to, you have to find your place. You got to see things for what they are and what it is, you know, and all the same time, be a trailblazer and push things forward and evolve things, man. I think the world right now is in a, is in a state of evolution on so many different levels. And we get a chance to, you know, um, you know, we get a chance to do the fun part, mm -hmm. you know, of that and, and help push things in a, in a positive direction, in an optimistic direction, in a, in a, in a, in a humanity way. So it's like, um, yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm happy, you know, where I'm at and I'm, I'm happy that I get a chance to even have these conversations with you because it's always very insightful and reminds me of the things that are important. Trust and, me, there's a little refracted and, glory. Yeah, it makes not, me so happy, dude. I but, love listen, your success and listening to you. And it's, it's a, it really is a joy. And I hope you live to be a thousand years. Old. I appreciate it. Maybe not a thousand. I'd say maybe, maybe 200. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be cool with 200. You, the no. world needs you, man. You're doing uh, beautiful stuff. And, and you're it, an man. artist across all all these ways, and your art is evident in the way in the way you live, the way you conduct stuff, the way you treat people, the way you, your performances, the way you direct movies, and and you find a kind of you fashioning this this like beautiful mosaic out of that life. And I just it's a really an honor and a pleasure to to get to stand next to you sometimes and watch. Thanks, I man. appreciate you appreciate letting that. me in. If me and you to work together, who's directing who? Oh, you direct me. That's what I, you know, that's an easy, easy first answer. Yeah. I, I want to work with the good young directors. Okay. That's what I want to do. If I'm an actor, I wish I'm working with like somebody who could pick. Like, you tell you, I, I, there's a lot more good actors than, than there are great directors. Okay. So if I'm okay. like, you're, you're a spectacular movie star, Man, you're that's... a wonderful actor, and there's, you know, 30 of those. And I, I, there's a lot fewer of the directors who I'm like, God damn, if I get the chance, I'm going to work with this fucking guy because he's really can make me better. Man, and I'm being, um, yeah, I'll do anything yeah. for a director if I feel like at the end of the day, the they movie's going to work yeah. and they got me. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing that I would feel in a heartbeat. Yeah, that means a lot. See, Easy. I was going to go the other way. I was going to say, I, I see more of your movies and, I, and I, I'm a big fan of those. I definitely want to be directed by you. <laughs> All right, uh, for sure. We'll make a swap We'll make deal. a swap. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's figure it out, man. If I can afford you, though, you just get more and more expensive all the time. I'll just take it out on the back end. Worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good business. <laughs> Thanks, man. My man. I appreciate you, man. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah, yeah.